Hi, Buddy Lindsay here from GoDjango.com. Today I want to talk to you about something that is going to meet with a lot of resistance with the rest of the Django community. And that's the fact that I don't think you should use the Django admin in production. Now I have two caveats with that. One is if it's only you. If you're creating a website, it's kind of toying around website, and you're going to be the only one that ever edits it, then it's probably fine to use the Django admin because you know exactly how the data should be, you know how it all works, and it's probably okay at that point. But I also feel like if it's gonna lead into a second person editing data, you need to do your own custom admin. That's not a custom Django admin, it's a custom admin so that you can display the data the way it should be. I also feel like that you can use the admin if you're doing development or only the developers are using it in production to do basic data lookup and tweaks and only developers are ever going to use it and not a business person in the company. So with those two caveats out of the way, let's take a look at why I don't think the Django admin should be used. And I think there's really five reasons the Django admin shouldn't be used in production. The first one, and this is going to kind of rub a few people the wrong way, is I think it leads to laziness in the business, into the business side of the business. And when I say laziness, I mean people say, oh, well, there's an admin generated automatically. We can just use that and it'll all be fine. Well, the problem is that the really the only ones that understand the data are the developers because they've generated out all the models and you're going to spend time, you know, trying to customize things uh, to get it to work right. And really, if you give it to a non a developer when they start looking at it, it takes them a while to get trained and it takes them a while to understand it. And it's kind of, it can be confusing, very confusing for new users to get in and look at the Django admin and really understand what's going on and, and navigate around. I, I work with people all the time that do with the Django admin and they're constantly looking for stuff. Heck, I'm constantly looking for stuff and having to do control F in my browser and search for the model that I want to use and then edit the piece of information. Whereas if I had a better menuing system, a better thing inside of a custom admin, I can get to where I need to go a lot faster because I'm trying to accomplish a specific business task and not modify data to fit the business. And that's kind of where I come at from at least a laziness in the business side of doing the website. The number two reason that I think it's bad to use the Django admin in production is that it leads to more errors in your data. And what do I mean by that? Well, think about it. You have a lot of data in there and you have to spend time and you have to customize, you know, I want this type of data to go in here. I want it to be moved here. You know, you're kind of doing all of these different things, but there's a lot of field steel. And if you use something like Django inline where or the Django admin inline uh, third party app, you could do inline for like um, adding extra data and it's kind of uh, nested inside in the admin. So you can get some seriously long admin pages where you're trying to edit and add data and it can get really confusing really fast as to what you're putting where and if you're adding a piece of information and you need to do like 50 different inlines which is basically like a foreign key relationship and you're adding multiples of everything uh, I guess not really a foreign key but like a many to many and you're adding it then you can get a ton of data in there and you're just like hey what what's going on? Like, uh, did I edit this up here? Did I put this down here? And it's kind of confusing. And then when you hit save, depending on the amount of data, it can take extra time to save uh, because it's trying to parse everything. And you don't really have any kind of auto completion stuff that you could if you had spent time on a custom admin. The third reason is dev time. Uh, a lot of times when I see, I see people go through huge feats of editing and development to create and modify this Django admin to be able to have a nice functional little thing for our uh, users to be able to insert and put in data in a easy to understand way. When that's not what the Django admin is good at. Like it's good for just quickly seeing data and editing it not to have custom workflows like that. It's terrible at that because you only have two states, edit and update. And you can't just view data very well. Like you can't click into an object and go view the data and it not be editable. Like that's just not something it's good at. You can't, you have to do some really wonky stuff if you want to be able to 
uh, edit data and auto populate other parts of the data. It gets really weird and you spend a lot of dev time trying to do custom things to the admin. Whereas if you were to do a custom admin, you would spend probably the same amount of time, maybe a tiny bit more in creating a custom admin and get the exactly the things you want and only the things that you want. And you can do auto population, you can do all kinds of other stuff and you can then save time later on down the road for other people in the business to be able to enter in the data exactly the way they need to go so you can eliminate you know number two which is reduce the amount of errors that you get into your data the fourth reason i don't like to use the django admin is it adds another possibility for an attack vector if you know that your admin is there if you know django is being used and most people don't change slash admin to anything else then it leads to the possibility, hey, I have this new custom login. And if you watched a video I did on Django Honeypot, you can sit there and you can try as much as you want to try to log in to that Django admin and you can brute force it until maybe you can get in. And so it just leads to a, a potential where somebody could get into your data. And guess what? If they can make it into there, now they have access to all of your data and that's not exactly a good thing. Fortunately, there's an application out there called Django Honeypot, which makes that original login page a honeypot so that it can, you know, you can try to log in all you want, you'll never make it in, and we start to record, you know, who's logging in and where they're from so that we can go add that to maybe some white or black lists. Uh, I guess a blacklist in this case. So, uh, you know, security is a reason for not using the Django admin. And the final reason that I don't really think we should be using the Django admin in production is, well, I mean, let's be honest about it. It's kind of ugly. It got a lot better in you know the latest update that it had with doing a flat panel, doing a flat view, but it's not mobile friendly. Uh, it's not, it, it doesn't work well with the way, you know, we generally like to do business. It's a bad user experience all around. And, it, you know, it's kind of like, hey, do I want people to enjoy what they're doing or do I not want people to, to not enjoy what they're doing? We can spend a little extra time with our Django admin, uh, our custom thing that we build out to the side. We can you know, make it look the same as the rest of our site and make it a joy to use and have a good user experience. The other part of that is depending on how you're doing development of that feature, you could potentially get a specific feature you know, down to a point and refined really well, and then just push it over to the customer side of the equation. And now they can do that admin task potentially instead of you having to worry about it. And so it gives you an opportunity to vet out some of the features that you might want to give to your customers that you have to do all the time, instead of making it a manual process that you always have to go into the Django admin and, and do yourself. So it's an opportunity to be able to make things better for your customer and the customer that is the people in the business. So again, these are five reasons, I guess not 10, but five reasons that I think people should not be using the Django admin in production. I personally think that more people should strive to not use the Django admin in production and we should move towards you know, encouraging people to not do that. Now, granted, this is probably not going to happen just from this one little video, but I hope this has afforded you an opportunity to really think about uh, the, the usage of the Django admin in, in your production environments. So with that, please feel free to leave comments below. I would love to hear your opinions. Please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And if not, I wouldn't recommend doing anything. Uh, Otherwise, please subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. And feel free to watch a couple of the other videos that I have below. I want to thank you for your time and have a great day.